to this DJI Mini 3 Pro Beginner's Guide. This is perfect for you if you just picked up the drone and want to familiarize yourself with your purchase. Or you may be sitting on the fence just about to buy one. That would be a good one too. In this episode, we will take a closer look at the DJI RC. This is a one-piece unit with a 5.5-inch touchscreen capable of producing 700 nits. 700 nits is uh, enough for you to see what's going on on the screen unless you position yourself in direct sunlight. This unit runs the Android operating system. This is, at least in my book, a huge step forward opposed to the previous solution where you had sort of the controller where you had to put your phone either on top or below the remote control to be able to see the video feed coming from the drone. What you're getting with this one is a HD feed 1080p up to 60 frames per second and the latency is pretty low as well. You will be able to keep this remote around for a while because it is supporting the Air 2S and it's supporting the Mavic 3 as well as the Mini 3 series. And hopefully they will continue to do so with future products. The sticks that you need to operate the drone are located in these pits on the back of the remote. You just pick one out, turn the remote, and then you mount it through the thread on top of the control. You have two main flight controls. On the left side, you have the throttle that makes the drone go up and down. You have the yaw that makes the drone turn around its own axis. On the right side, you have the pitch that will make the drone go back and forward. You have the roll that will make it go sideways. You can see that the sticks, they are spring assisted and they will always return to the center position when you let go. Between the two flight controls, there are a number of functions. By simply adding a short press, we would know the current battery status indicated by the LEDs of the remote. The remote is based on the Android operating system, but it's not the same app as you're downloading on your phones that is running on uh, this DJI RC. You need a special version that's being distributed by DJI to update this one. And normally you would be prompted once the remote has been powered up and connected to Wi-Fi. On the left side, you have another button that has an H and two parallel lines. This is going to be your favorite button when you are out in the wild and doing crazy stuff. If you short tap this button, this will simply pause any operation that the drone is currently doing. So if you're using any of the automated flight modes, some of the quick shots or some of the other stuff that the drone can do quite automated, you can stop that instantly by pressing the pause button. If you decide to long press this button, you will initiate the return to home. So if you want the drone automatically to return to the takeoff position, you simply long press this button and then you will hear this characteristic sound that the drone is returning to home. There's the LEDs in the top, which I explained shows the battery status of uh, the remote. Next to the LED power indicators, there's another indicator. That one shows you the current signal status. And because the drone is turned off, it's red because there's no connection between the drone and uh, the remote. This is the meaning of the different states of the LED. Between the two useful buttons, there is a flight mode switch. If you push it all the way to the left, you will force the drone into cine mode. Cine mode is ideal when you're gonna do slow, nice recordings. A little bit like tripod mode from the old days. If you put it in the center, this is the normal mode. This is where you're probably going to do most of your flying. And if I push it to the right, I will put it into sport mode. One thing to be aware of if you're using sport mode, because this is the fastest mode that is available for the drone. So you can really get at a fast pace to the location that you want to film. Be aware of in sport mode is that the visual obstacle avoidance is disabled. Regardless how you put this switch when you power on the drone, it will always start up in normal mode. And that is regardless if you have flicked it into sport mode the last time that you used the drone, when you power it up again, it will start in normal mode. So to be able to get it in sport mode, you have to flick it out of sport mode and then back into sport mode to be able to enable that. That's likely a safety precaution built in by DJI. So if we flip the remote, on the left side, there's a video start-stop button. On the right side, there's a button where you can snap a photo. Below these two buttons, there are two wheels. And the one on the left, that controls the angle of the gimbal. 
You can simply by applying a force to this spring assisted wheel, you can adjust the gimbal position. Again, they're spring assisted, so if you let go, it will return to the center position. The wheel on the left side that controls the zoom. So with that one, you'll be able to do a smooth zoom on the fly. Just be aware that the zoom levels, they depend on uh, what resolution that you're currently recording with the drone. So in 4K, you get two times digital zoom, where 1080p will give you four times magnification. All of them are digital zoom, so do expect some sort of quality loss. You may be able to, if you take a really close look, to see two antenna symbols indicated here on the front side of the remote. This means because there are no external antennas on this remote, that if you face it in this direction towards the drone, you will have the maximum signal strength. So in case you run into problems with signal interference, you just need to point the remote directly at the drone. So not standing like this, trying to see what's going on. If we look at the backside of the remote, below the pit for storing the control sticks, there are two buttons, a C1 and a C2. The C1 is default set for the gimbal, so if you press it, you will get a 90 degree top-down shot, and if you press it again, the gimbal will return to level. The C2 is default set for turning the camera between the horizontal and the vertical recording mode. Both the C1 and C2 are customizable buttons that can be changed through the GGI Fly app interface. This is something we will look into later. In the base of the remote, there are two threads available for probably mounting a lanyard that will make it easier for you to sort of carry the remote when you're out and about. It's not a particularly heavy remote, this one. It's only 390 grams, but it's still a lot more than a cell phone. And having a lanyard where you can just hang it around your neck might help you in some scenarios. In the center, there's an exposed USB port that you can use for charging the remote. This will also be the port you will be using for updating uh, the remote through the DJI Assistant 2 app. This is a desktop software that will allow you to upgrade or refresh the software that's currently running on the remote. And this USB port, you will use that as well to offload the screen recording footage from the DJI RC. The screen recording might be quite self-explanatory, but basically it records everything that happens on the screen. This is very, very useful, especially uh, when you're getting back home and you have a lot of footage and you want to organize it. You sort of have a timeline of your flight, so you can very easily see when what is recorded. It's also very good in case that something happens and you want to go back and analyze the situation to find out what really went wrong. I always fly with the screen recording enabled. That might be a special case because I often use the recordings as part of my videos. But still, it's a good idea to have it enabled. Next to the exposed USB port, there is a plastic flap. And if I flip that one up, you would see there is another USB-C port that's called a host port as well as a SD card slot. The SD card slot will allow you to plug in a, yeah, a SD card <laughs> where you can store the screen recordings that I just mentioned, as well as offload footage from the drone that you'll be able to store on this card. I usually, because it's not very high demanding, use a 128 or maybe a 64 gigabyte SD card for that purpose. The host port next to the SD card slot, that one you can use to hook up accessories for your drone. A good example of that is the DJI mic, which you can plug directly into this one. And in this way, you can get audio recordings directly onto your screen recording. This might be an expensive solution to a very simple problem. So I would recommend to use an ordinary USB microphone lapel mic for that purpose. That works equally well. I also heard rumors that you would be able to get like a data module that you'll be able to hook into this USB-C port. But I don't have any additional information about that. Maybe you know, so you can inform us, drop a comment below. A fully charged RC will give you more than four hours of flight time. You should calculate around 1.5 hours of charging time if you're using a USB charger capable of delivering three amps. As this product is designed to be used outside, it might be useful for you to know that the operating range recommended by TGI is from minus 10 Celsius up to plus 40. So you have around 50 degrees Celsius to play around with. The listed range when you're using this type of remote, at least in the US, is 12 kilometers. But if you are in an area with strong interference, this is dramatically reduced. 
down to 1.5 kilometers. But I sometimes get breakups even in closer proximities. But as most countries dictates that you should keep the drone within visual line of sight, then um, it shouldn't be a problem in most cases. Just remember the direction of the built-in antennas in case that you get into problems, then simply point them towards the drone and then you'll be fine. In cases where you are not fine and you actually end up losing the connection to the drone, the automatic return to home will kick in and the drone will get back to you. And what I've actually seen in real life scenarios is that when it's on its way back, the drone is capable of connecting or reconnecting. So you can basically abort the mission and then yeah, continue with your flying. In the next episode, we will hook up the remote to the drone and take a closer look at the DJI Fly app, which is the software that will enable all the goodies that is probably the reason why you purchased the drone. So make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on that video. Also, I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.